That is 100%, no doubt, Statira. In fact, there's a female laying eggs. Let's see if I can get her. Guys, here's a pink spot female laying eggs. There she goes. Hi folks, David Fine from Keys Mods, and today is gonna be a really short episode. I'd like to show you just a few plants that you can put in your yard to attract butterflies and have butterflies in your butterfly garden literally all day, all year long. Three plant species and you can find them. So guys, uh, if you like this video, you find it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because we're gonna show you all about butterflies and moths of South Florida. So guys, check it out. Let's get to some butterfly gardening. Guys, look at all the sulfur butterflies around my fire bush. Guys, these are a mixture of Statira. I believe it's Statira. And, yep, that is 100%, no doubt, Statira. And so is, well, Statira and Pink Spot Sulfurs look virtually identical, at least the males. So very tough to tell apart. But boy, both species love firebush. And they are all over this little bush here I have. And it's so cool to have just one little bush like this and be able to have all these. So there's four right now flying guys around this bush. So cool, man, to have, be able to have one little bush in your backyard, urban South Florida, guys, there's like a guy doing his roof over there, um, and have this type of butterfly activity going on in your backyard. And so now, it doesn't hurt to have a coin vine right here, because this is the host plant. In fact, there's a female laying eggs. Let's see if I can get her in the video. She's laying eggs. Little out of reach. Let me see if I can get her. If I pull this down nice and gentle. Let's see. Will she let me? Oh, there she goes. Oh, she just flew. That's a female, guys. Female Statira. And now he's interested now. Sorry, lady, I didn't mean to like rest, ruin your beauty sleep. <laughs> but she was just in this coin vine, guys. And uh, this is easy South Florida gardening, guys, because the, this coin vine, Delbergia, is a native plant and it grows like crazy. So literally all you gotta do is just pop it in the ground and it will take off. And your, your biggest problem is gonna be keeping it trimmed back. Um, probably twice a year I've got to cut it way back. It's already grown over my neighbor's fence over here. And that's probably one of the bigger problems we have with it. But, you know, it's it's a it's a weedy vine, or it's a woody vine. It grows very, very, you know, strongly. Has <laughs> it's it's gonna grow, man. It's gonna it's gonna reach out, it's gonna send its little uh, tendrils out and kind of hang on whatever it can come across. So um, guys, there's eggs all over the thing. You can see the little white eggs, Statira eggs. And then of course, we've got some small caterpillars. Um, I'll bet if I look long enough, I could probably find some larger caterpillars. But guys, that's all it takes to have a ton of butterflies in your in your yard. You just put a couple host plants. These are the larval hosts. Coin vine is the larval host plant for Statira sulfur. All right, guys. So I'm out in my front yard now, and I've got these pink spot sulfurs flying around. 
And guys, these look almost identical to Statira, the ones we saw in the backyard with the coin vine. But the difference is very, very small difference. But the, the host plant is one of the bigger differences and then probably the easiest way to tell them apart. Guys, here's a pink spot female laying eggs. There she goes. And there's a male disturbing her, chasing her into the into my red bay tree or swamp bay. He's looking for her. She, she literally hid, guys. So that female, to run away from the male, flew into this tree and landed somewhere in here so that he would like lose her. And I'll bet if I shake this tree, she'll fly, watch. Where'd she go? There she is. So guys, that's the MO. Uh, the boys are very persistent. And the girls, all they want to do is lay eggs. So um, this tree, guys, my horse flush mahogany, it literally can't keep new growth on it. As soon as the new growth comes out, uh, pink spot females will come and lay eggs all over it. And within a few short days, the caterpillars hatch out and they devour it. But literally, guys, there's almost always, every time I come home from work, uh, there's almost always sulfurs flying around this on, around this tree. Let's see if we can find a caterpillar for you guys. That would be cool. Um, let's see. Wow, looks like all the caterpillars have really decimated the uh, the stems here, the new growth. Well, well, there's a there's a chrysalis, guys. If you ever want to see a pink spot sulfur chrysalis in the wild, there it is. Right there. So, looks like, it actually looks like it might be virused. Very interesting. Yeah, guys, so you see this black spots here on this chrysalis? Um, that's not good. Whenever a chrysalis starts to turn colors like that, and it's got that yellow coloration in the abdominal segments. That's not a good sign. And for some reason, they virused. And I have a feeling it's because when a tree that's not very big, this is a pretty small tree, uh, you know, it's only about six and a half, seven feet tall, and it gets hundreds of eggs laid on it. A lot of trees will put out toxins once they start to get really, really decimated. And, um, this guy may have fallen victim to that. I'm not sure, or maybe it could be a parasitic parasitic wasp or something like that, who knows. But this is definitely not a healthy pupa at all. So, um, but here's guys, you can see all the eggs here. Look at all the eggs. As soon as this, look guys, look, there is no new growth on this tree at all. The caterpillars have completely decimated it. But as soon as these little tiny new growth meristems come popping out, they get saturated with eggs immediately. So you can think about what kind of sibling rivalry will go on in days to come on this tree. Uh, like literally every little stem that has a meristem coming out has got all these little white cream colored eggs all over it. So. Uh, I'm not seeing any caterpillars. Oh my gosh, look at all the eggs, guys. Look, guys, there's, there's probably, there's probably 50 eggs on this one little stem. When that, when this eggs hatch, there's gonna be no leaves left. I mean, they're gonna eat it so quick. So, yeah, that's butterfly gardening in South Florida, guys. You just put a couple host plant trees you know, we've got, this is our horse flesh mahogany, which is an exotic actually. And I've got my coin vine in the back and a fire bush. But guys, that's all it takes. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you like some simple South Florida butterfly gardening. Literally, these trees require no work except to trim them back every now and then. And because I have these few trees in our yard, we get bugs, we get butterflies all the time. So. All right guys, hope you liked that short video. It was short to the point. We got tons of butterflies in my yard. Uh, 
I got my horseflesh mahogany back there, our pink spot sulfur tree, and in the backyard I've got my uh, coin vine and my fire bush. There's literally pyrid sulfur butterflies in my yard all the time just because I have those few plants back there. So guys, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out the rest of our videos. So until next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.